Welcome everyone. My name is Tom Corcoran, legislator here in District 11. On behalf of myself and legislator Gina Hansett, who's my partner down here in Marlboro and the town of Lloyd in District 10. We'd like to welcome all of you and all our colleagues, friends, and of course our county executive, Jen Metzger, and her wonderful staff to the most Southern part of Ulster County. And we're glad to have you down here to present the 2024 county executive budget. We appreciate all of you taking your time out here on your busy schedules. And we'd like to thank the town of Marlboro and Supervisor Scott Corcoran for hosting us here today. And at this time, it would be my honor and pleasure to welcome Tom Schroeder, Vietnam veteran, and Jerome Greco, World War II and Korean War veteran, for our pledge to the flag. Jerry, the administration this way. If you place your right hand over your heart, follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, Jerry here. He's uh, World War II and Korea, and I'm Vietnam. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you to our veterans, Mr. Schroeder and Mr. Greco, for leading us in the pledge. And thank you, sir, um, both of you gentlemen, for your service to our country. On behalf of Legislator Corcoran and myself, we are honored to have the 2024 budget addressed in the town of Marlboro, which we both proudly represent. We are happy to show off our district where the majestic Hudson River meets the hills and mountains of the Hudson Valley and our landscape sprinkled with beautiful apple orchards. It truly is our season to shine, so welcome all. It is my honor to introduce someone I am proud to know as a colleague, mentor, and friend, the chair of the Elster County Legislature, Tracy Bartels. I need a little boost. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues, legislators Hansett and Corcoran and Supervisor Corcoran for hosting us today. It is so wonderful to be in Southern Ulster. I'm from Southern Ulster as well. I want to also acknowledge uh, my fellow legislators that are joining us, Vice Chair Criswell, legislators Erner, Petit, Stewart, and Sperry. And hopefully that's up here. So when Executive Metzger asked me to make a few remarks at her budget presentation, I gladly accepted. And then the shock set in. This is the first time that legislators have participated in an executive budget presentation ever. When I mentioned this to Executive Metzger, she was surprised. It's only natural for her to recognize her colleagues in the legislature. But today marks a new level of collaborative governance. I'm sure that there are cynics out there who would suggest that we keep our offices separate and make no mistake, it is structurally so. But we share priorities, the well-being of all people of Ulster County, the protection of our natural world, and the urgency with which we must address climate change. Executive Metzger is a bold leader. She is a willing and collaborative partner who seeks input and accepts challenge. I do want to mention that Jen Metzger is the first woman elected to executive office in Ulster County and the only woman executive in the state. This is her first county budget and I cannot wait to dig into the detail and to work together to address Ulster County's needs and deliver the best to all people of this beautiful county. We have our work cut out for us, but together we can achieve anything. It's my honor to introduce my friend and partner in county government, Executive Jen Metzger.
Thank you, everyone. I brought a book. We'll only be here for two hours. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> So good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today for the presentation of the 2024 Executive Budget. And special thank you to legislators Corcoran and Hansett for the introduction and the Town of Marlboro for hosting us today. Uh, I join with Tracy in saying I'm just so happy to be here in the southern part of the county as a uh, northerner from Rosendale. Um, it's really important for us to be in all parts of the county. Tracy, your words are incredibly touching and meaningful to me because you, like, well, like legislator hands it, you are my friend, you are my mentor, you are my colleague, and uh, I've so appreciated working with you and so look forward to working on this first budget with you after today. To all the county legislators and department heads joining us here today, thank you for all the work you do for the people of Ulster County. It's been an honor to work with you these last nine months. This budget is the result of diligent work, careful planning, and some creative thinking of how to use limited resources to tackle the challenges we face and capitalize on opportunities. It's a budget that allocates resources where they are needed most, builds on the county's strengths, and responsibly manages government finances to deliver for our residents and businesses. I am fortunate to have an incredible budget team and want to thank them for the hundreds of hours of work that went into this proposed budget. We are in a very strong position financially as a county going into 2024. The independent accounting firm that has been closing the books on 2022 has completed the part of its work that affects the budget projections, and we expect the unrestricted fund balance to exceed $110 million. Because these numbers are not yet certified, and because we face an uncertain economic climate, I have taken a highly conservative approach to this budget. The budget reserves 20% of operating expenditures in a rainy day fund, which is the maximum allowed under the county policy. The 2024 budget includes 14, $413 million in spending, up from $381 million in 2023. $9 million of this new spending is funded by state and federal grants at no cost in the county, to the county. However, we do face a $17 million increase in mandated and contractual spending, most of which is in just three mandated programs, Medicaid, safety net, and early intervention. With those mandated costs top of mind, I have limited the increase in non-mandated spending to 1.4% while making investments in priority areas to improve infrastructure, address the housing crisis, protect the environment, and help our people thrive. Knowing that the challenges our families and businesses face, this budget does not raise property taxes. Somehow I knew that line would get an applause. <laughs> In my February State of the County address, I laid out a vision for our work ahead to build a resilient, sustainable, and thriving Ulster County that leaves no one behind. The 2024 budget reflects a continued commitment to moving this vision forward. The work begins with addressing the harsh reality that we simply do not have enough housing that our residents can afford. Fully 41% of households in our county are extremely cost burdened and spend over half their income on housing. People are losing their homes and can't find affordable alternatives. Families in emergency housing stay in these temporary accommodations for an average of 19 months. That is nearly twice as long as it was two years ago. This instability interferes with school and work and can take a major toll on people's mental health and well-being. And it's hurting our businesses, which are struggling to hire and retain employees in the face of what it costs for employees to live here. 
We need an all-hands-on-deck approach, which is why we worked with our partners in the legislature this year to create the Ulster County Housing Action Fund dedicated to catalyzing development of housing that is healthy, green, and most importantly, affordable. I want to recognize and thank, in particular, he's not here today, but I'll say it anyway, <laughs> legislator Abe Uchitel, chair of the Health, Human Services, and Housing Committee, who's been a great leader and partner in these efforts. The county's commitment to expanding housing opportunities has also been truly bipartisan, and I want to thank Minority Leader Ken Rock and my colleagues across the aisle for their support of this initiative. The housing crisis cannot be solved overnight. We have made a significant up upfront investment for the fund with $15 million from the county's excess fund balance, but we need a sustained commitment over time. I've joined with the legislature in supporting an appropriate increase in the county's occupancy tax from 2 to 4%, which better aligns with surrounding counties, and I am proposing in the executive budget to dedicate 25% of those, annual, those revenues annually to the Housing Action Fund, or about 1.5 million to help meet the basic needs in years ahead. Using occupancy tax revenues for this purpose makes sense, since a lot of the revenue comes from short-term rentals, which contributed to the housing shortage. A number of local governments in Ulster County have sought to preserve more housing for their residents by capping the number of permitted short-term rentals. But they face challenges enforcing these regulations because of the difficulty of identifying illicit vacation rentals. I'm proposing as part of this budget that we expand our capability to monitor short-term rental activity across dozens of platforms and then freely share this information with local governments. This will help them with enforcement and importantly will give all of us a better understanding of the short-term rental market in different parts of the county. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the commitment of local governments and our Housing Smart Communities program to address other housing barriers. The game-changing zoning update spearheaded by Mayor Steve Noble in the city of Kingston is exactly the kind of initiative we need. And we've included funding in the 2024 budget to help municipalities with, municip with municipal planning studies um, to move more of these initiatives forward. As we work to preserve and expand our housing stock, we must also improve access to emergency housing for those in need. The experience of becoming unhoused can be destabilizing and traumatic, particularly if you're already in crisis, and it is not easy to navigate the complex web of services and resources. This is why I'm proposing in the budget to create a more proactive, personalized, and nimble team within the Department of Social Services, a new housing and homelessness unit to streamline the client experience and connect people with resources they need. The unit will be led by a special assess assistant to the commissioner and will include a housing specialist and emergency housing resource coordinator to provide individualized support for our unhoused residents, find the most appropriate emergency housing locations, and help, help them secure long-term housing in coordination with nonprofit partners. And the resource coordinator is actually going to be in the field um, moving around among different emergency housing locations so that they can really meet people where they are and help them on site. I want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank legislator Phil Erner for his tireless advocacy for constituents in crisis and for elevating the need for new approaches to emergency housing more generally. Thank you. As a county, we are confronting the threat of, ch of climate change head on. The unbreathable air quality earlier this summer from Canadian wildfires was yet another wake up call for all of us, although we don't need any more wake up calls. Um, kids were kept home from school and from camp. Elderly and vulnerable residents were forced to stay inside to protect their health and work schedules were interrupted. We can't undo climate change, but we can reduce the severity of the crisis, better protect our children's future, and adapt to the changes that are already underway. 
In my first month in office, I issued an executive order to fully align our county government with the State Climate Act and aggressively reduce emissions. We've worked closely with the legislature to fortify our green fleet and green purchasing policies. We launched a composting initiative in county facilities and we're installing on-site solar panels at the Hall of Records and UCAT with several other renewable projects in development. As stated in my executive order, our ultimate objective is to meet 100% of our electricity requirements through clean, locally sourced energy with as much of that gener generated on site as possible. All of this work must be done in partnership with the legislature, and I want to take a moment to thank my friend and colleague of many years, Legislator Mana Jo Green, Chair of the Energy, Environment, and Sustainability Committee, for her long standing leadership and incredible tenacity <laughs> for all of those who know Mana in moving these climate solutions forward. I also want to thank Deputy Chair Gina Hansett for her steady support of these efforts, Eric Stewart, and so many others. This is a legislature that is committed to leading on climate. Thank you. To help move our initiatives forward at the department level, we launched the Ulster County Climate Corps a paid summer internship program that puts 17 bright, motivated young people to work with county staff on climate solutions in eight different county departments and at SUNY Ulster. The program was incredibly successful and received such positive feedback from staff that I'm proposing to expand the program to 24 Climate Corps interns in 2024. <laughs> They bring skills and ideas that add value to the work of the county, and importantly, we're building the bench of public servants for the future by giving them experience in government today. The biggest source of county government emissions is our aged and inefficient buildings, which also cost taxpayers a lot of money. To advance energy efficient improvements, I propose creating an energy and electrification manager position within the Department of Public Works and allocating 18 million from the county's excess fund balance to establish a decarbonization capital reserve. This funding will support climate responsible investments in county facilities as old dirty fossil fuel based systems age out. With in-house expertise, we can implement energy saving projects more effectively, ensure reliability, and optimize the integration of renewable energy. <laughs> Beyond the county's own buildings, we can do more to help our residents make cost-saving cost improvements in their homes. Currently, our Department of Social Services administers HEAP a life-saving federal program that helps people pay their heating bills. As part of this budget, I'm proposing a pilot program to help heap eligible homeowners and renters access federal and state resources to weatherize their homes and install energy efficient appliances. This costs the county nothing. The Federal Inflation Reduction Act allocates $300 million in funding to New York State for residential energy rebates and programs. And we want to make sure that all Ulster County residents can take advantage of it. We're committed to a clean energy transition that leaves no one behind. And this includes providing efficient and effective public bus service. Our UCAP bus system isn't just an important climate solution. It's an affordable way for people to get around, both residents and visitors. And many people use our buses to get to work, to college, and to appointments. I have spoken with many seniors who no longer drive, and UCAP gives them independence and a way to see friends they would not otherwise have. We're continuing our work to green the bus fleet. In August, I, I signed into law amendments to our green fleet policy requiring the fleet to be fully electric by 2035, which means replacing uh, three to five buses annually as they age out. We can meet many of our public transit needs with smaller, less costly buses. And for the first time in 2024, 
those smaller electric models are coming on the market. <laughs> this is great news, and we're looking to purchase up to four electric replacements for smaller buses that have reached the end of their useful life. And thanks to a grant secured by the county planning department, much of the cost of these replacements will be paid with federal resources and not county tax dollars. It's all about the money. But we know we're not meeting all our public transportation needs. We must work to expand routes and scheduling. And as part of the 2024 budget, I'm proposing that we commit 25% of occupancy tax revenues, about 1.5 million annually, to sustain a robust public bus system for residents and visitors now and in the future. It's good for the economy, good for the environment, and most importantly, it's good for the people of Ulster County. Just a few months ago, we saw our neighbors in Orange County experience terrifying flash flooding, causing millions of dollars in infrastructure damage, and most tragically, taking a life. Here in Ulster County, we are particularly vulnerable to floods. In response, we're making strategic investments in infrastructure, including nearly $20 million in 2024 to improve our roads and bridges. Major capital projects next year include replacements of the Wolven Bridge in the town of Kingston, the Fantine Kill Bridge in the town of Rochester, and the Galeville Bridge in the town of Shangam. As we assess, repair, and replace our bridges and culverts, we're preparing for the impacts of climate change. Past 100-year events now occur roughly every 20 years, and we have to build our infrastructure and capacity accordingly. This means investing in our human power as well. And in the executive budget, I am adding positions to the bridge crew in the Department of Public Works to more readily respond to safety and maintenance issues. And I wanna point out that these additions also enable the department to do more work in-house, saving taxpayers money. Improving our resilience also requires shoring up our infrastructure to respond to emergencies. The executive budget creates an $18 million capital reserve for the planned government operations center on Paradise Lane in New Paltz, a resilient facility to house emergency operations and other critical services. By dedicating these funds from the county's excess fund balance and a reserve, we will save taxpayers over a million annually just in borrowing costs. We're not just improving the resilience of our communities in this budget, we're looking to uplift individuals with new economic and educational opportunities. 2024 will be an exciting year as we move forward with the Workforce Innovation Center at iPark 87. I wanna thank Brian Cahill and Herb Litz, Chair and Vice Chair of the Economic Development Co Committee for their partnership in this initiative and long-standing commitment to redeveloping the former IBM site. With the lease approved by the legislature, we will co-locate our economic and workforce development offices with educational partners and businesses seeking to grow in this re-energized industrial campus. We're forging a unique collaboration with SUNY Ulster, SUNY New Paltz, Ulster BOCES, employers, and community-based organizations to equip our residents with the knowledge and skills to access family-sustaining jobs, regardless of education level, income, or stage of life. We also want to make sure our residents have the tools they need to succeed, and that includes access to high-speed internet. The COVID-19 pandemic brought into sharp focus how much internet access has become a basic necessity for school, for work, for health and safety, and for social connection. Every resident in our community should have affordable access to this service. I'm excited to announce as part of the 2024 budget that will provide funding to enhance wireless broadband availability in public spaces such as parks, libraries, town halls, emergency, emergency shelters, and even Main Street areas.
The executive budget also reflects a strong commitment to our community college, SUNY Ulster, and the affordable high quality education it provides to our residents, thousands of students a year. The proposed budget includes $6.9 million in operating assistance and about $21.5 million in capital costs, half of which is reimbursed by the state to improve campus buildings and reduce ongoing energy and maintenance costs, which have been adding up as of late. <laughs> it's important to keep in mind that the county's investment in our community college does pay for itself. Many SUNY Ulster graduates stay here in our county, contributing to the local economy and tax base, raising families here and volunteering in our communities. Um, this includes, I believe, a number of people in this room. The total economic impact of the college was estimated in 2022 to be nearly $100 million. So just to give you an example. It's also a vehicle for educational equity, providing an affordable pathway to a fulfilling career. It is just not enough uh, to have a high school diploma alone for many jobs in today's economy. Education and job, and job training can break generational poverty and reduce recidivism rates in the criminal justice system. In my State of the County address, I announced plans for a Corrections to Careers program in the county jail in partnership with the Carpenters Union and Sheriff Juan Figueroa is with us today. This pre-apprenticeship program provides a pathway for incarcerated individuals to become an apprentice with the Carpenters Union or any other trade of their choice upon their release. <laughs> I'm excited to report that over 30 people in the jail have expressed an interest in participating when the program kicks off this fall. And I also want to give a shout out to the sheriff for his successful launch of a GED program in the jail with over 20 individuals participating. These are the kinds of programs that support a productive new beginning. And we can keep people out of jail altogether by expanding opportunities to those on probation. And I'm happy to announce that the 2024 executive budget extends the Correction to Careers program to the county's probation department as well. The Restorative Justice and Community Empowerment Center reflects our county's dedication to repairing harm and promoting reconciliation in a process that involves all affected parties. This year's budget expands and strengthens our commitment by adding a new full-time mental health specialist to the probation department to provide on-site services to young people on probation and those referred to the Restorative Justice Center. Providing pathways to employment is another critical piece. And in addition to the Corrections to Careers program, our Office of Employment and Training will be providing on-site services in 2024. Finally, the executive budget expands funding for community empowerment, uh, sorry, empowerment programming, including financial literacy classes and anti-violence workshops. One of the greatest areas of need in our county is without question access to mental health support and substance use treatment and recovery. In 2023, we allocated $1.3 million in opioid settlement funds to innovative programs, including the region's first outpatient detox program. Thank you. Um, we've got great providers in our community. We're very lucky. Um, also, we extended Spanish-speaking outpatient services, emergency housing for recovery, and an opioid spike response protocol in partnership with Ellenville Regional Hospital and the Sheriff's Office. The number one concern I hear from teachers, administrator, administrators, parents, and students is the desperate need for help in our schools. We initiated a successful pilot last year, offering supplemental mental health support to middle schools, the age group which we see the most critical need. 
some 70 students from every single district in the county are benefiting from this additional clinical support, and the feedback from educators has been extremely positive. This is a program I believe we must continue, and the executive budget extends the program in 2024. One of our most ambitious projects is the Community Behavioral Health Center at 368 Broadway in Kingston, where youth and adults will be able to access the care they need while avoiding emergency room visits. Agreements are now in place with providers for clinical services, and the County Department of Mental Health will relocate to the building in December, ensuring coordinated services for individuals across the continuum of care. I want to give a shout out to our Department of Public Works for the beautiful job they're doing renovating the space for the Department of Mental Health in that building. Thank, you. Thank them for their hard work. A key component of the center is the Crisis Stabilization Center plan for the first floor. The executive budget proposes to allocate $2 million of opioid settlement funding toward construction, together with a $1 million in funding to support the first year's operation. In the future, the center's op operation will be self-sustaining and fully covered by Medicaid and health insurance. When the doors open next year, our residents in crisis will be able to get the help they need 24-7. So As I mentioned in my February State of the County address in Ellenville, our county must be present in all corners of this big, beautiful county, uh, including right here, down of Marlboro. The county has dedicated $8.6 million of our Federal American Rescue Plan Act funding to villages and towns to help meet local needs, including over $4.6 million in grants for improvements to water and sewer infrastructure, and over 1.5 million in funding for local parks and recreation. In 2024, we will roll out our latest ARPA-funded program for municipalities, proposed by Marlboro's own legislator, Tom Corcoran, a $2.5 million grant program to support municipal solar and EV charging. And the county, county is thrilled to be able to provide this kind of support to our communities. I want to recognize legislators Criswell and Corcoran, the chair and deputy chair of the American Rescue Plan Committee, Megan Sperry, and all the committee members for their work to spread the benefits of this funding around our county. Thank you all. We're looking to bolster our services to underserved communities, beginning with a major project to breathe new life into the county's underused Trudy Resnick Farber building in Ellenville. We've taken a bottom-up approach to reimagining this, this building, and we've done extensive public outreach, and we've already introduced some new programming. Ellenville Regional Hospital is providing weekly fitness classes and health counseling. The Center for Veteran Reintegration is hosting veteran coffee clubs as part of their peer mental health support program. And we're collaborating with the Town of Wawarzing Recreation Department to bring new youth services to Trudy Farber. One of the most popular community requests is for an on-site concierge to directly connect folks with services and assistance and help avoid the need for the 40 minute drive all the way to Kingston. I'm happy to announce that my executive budget includes funding for this position. The concierge will serve as a community point person for county services, not only for Ellenville Warsing residents, but also for neighboring communities like Sean Gum and Rochester. The 2024 budget also includes capital funding for the design phase of major capital improvements to the building, including expanding the kitchen and dining areas and installing solar on the roof. We want this building to become a bustling hub of community activity when all is said and done. Um, I, he's not here today, but I do want to just take a moment and thank legislator John Gavaris for a strong support of these efforts and his tireless advocacy for Ellen, the Ellenville Wars and community. Tourism. Tourism is the number one economic activity in Ulster County. 
We have been gifted with stunning natural landscapes and outdoor recreational opportunities that enhance our quality of life and draw millions of visitors every year. We must steward and protect these resources, not just for residents and visitors of today, but also for future generations. We have already seen natural treasures like Pika Moose Blue Hole suffer from overuse, and we have to come up with thoughtful strategies to balance protection of sensitive areas and unique ecosystems with our tourism industry. In 2024, we'll develop a sustainable tourism plan that gives our visitors a high quality experience and keeps them coming back, while also building in the values of stewardship and environmental responsibility. Our county's natural places aren't the only gift we have. The arts community is the cultural heart of Ulster County and absolutely critical to the continued success of our tourism industry. I wanna thank legislator Peter Criswell, Chair Bartels, and Majority Leader John Hepner, who I just saw come in, um, for championing legislation to create an arts and culture master plan in 2024. This is going to be a huge benefit to our county, and I look forward to working with all of you to implement this plan in the, in the coming year. In my first year in office, we faced challenges that exposed vulnerabilities in county government processes and procedures. From my perspective, these challenges are opportunities to seize the moment and make changes that improve governance, transparency, and accountability. This year, I've hired an entirely new professional team in our finance department, headed by our new finance commissioner, Roseanne Daw. Roseanne and her team are incredibly hardworking and dedicated. The finance department, working together with County Comptroller March Gallagher and her team, is committed to strengthening internal controls and procedures to ensure the county financial management is as transparent and as efficient as possible. We're also making sure our dedicated employees in all 26 departments have the support they need for their success as public servants, including new training in the county's ethics law. Effective governance means clear communication of expectations and the provision of necessary resources. In 2024, we'll also extend training programs to the county's numerous boards and commissions so that the volunteers serving on these bodies feel supported and prepared in this volunteer service. To promote pro professional development and pathways for advancement, the 2024 budget proposes a new initiative with SUNY Ulster called the Ulster County Leadership Academy with opportunities for employees to earn micro-credentials in leadership and management. We're fortunate to have an industrious and dedicated workforce, and we honor them and improve our collective work by investing in their professional development. Finally, we are committed to creating a more diverse and inclusive work environment and workplace, and the 2024 budget provides funding for new training initiatives like Leading Inclusive, Inclusively, a management level training program. I've held you long enough. <laughs> I want to close by saying that it's been a great honor to serve as your county executive these last nine months and to have the opportunity to work with dedicated colleagues in the legislature and our many partners in and outside of government, many of you here today. Once again, I'd like to express my gratitude to my budget team, the hardworking staff in my office, and all county departments for their contributions to this proposed budget. Even with rising mandated costs, we have developed a fiscally responsible budget for 2024 that improves services, enhances our infrastructure, and invests in our greatest asset, our people, all while keeping discretionary spending in check and keeping property taxes flat. Together, we will continue to build a sustainable, resilient, thriving Ulster County that leaves no one behind. Thank you so much.